Warning, the following video contains a cursed preset. No actions in this video were done by a professional, but by someone who has lost their marbles, potentially. If you find anything other than S-tier gameplay repulsive, viewer discretion is advised. Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me. Terrible voice actors, welcome to the channel and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm just going to be going over a highlight from a stream that I did about a week ago, in which case I tested a melee camp preset for High Enrage Glacor. Now you may be wondering to yourself, how cursed is this preset really? I mean, honestly, it can't be that bad, right? Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Uh, I can explain. Though if we just bring that preset up on screen again, yes, this is very cursed, but there is good reason for most of it. But lower in rage, Glacor, you can get away with using just Vestment's armor and going for a full damage output setup, just using Berserk, some easy Ks, and you're off to the races there. You can even incorporate Meteor with a Gricko swap, and you will absolutely dump out damage like no other with basically infinite D-Claw and all of the other ultimates and thresholds you can do. However, at some point, you really can't keep up with the damage taken during Berserk because it doubles the damage that you actually take. This is the only ultimate in game that will actually increase damage taken for damage output. Over higher in rages, we have to change up the main damage source that we do and neglect that double damage taken until we really need to zerk. And it just so happens that at higher in rages, the arm damage requires a zerk to clear it, so we can kind of just save berserk for that point and shift our damage focus over to a more poison build with a blood reef being that melee can take advantage of both Vampirism Aura and Scrimshaw. Vamp Scrim only works with melee, so that is kind of the hidden benefit that it has. And while we're not going to be building up any big stacks anytime soon, although I'm sure some nutcase out there is already doing it, we can take advantage of the fact that melee with EZK in the current meta has a lot of bleeds to offer, which is a lot of hit splat spam, which results in a fair amount of damage under a poison build. And since we can only EZK once per minute. We can throw in a ZGS in there as well to help increase damage output. Now I'd assume at some point you'll have to save a ZGS for a minion spawn because the minion HP will get so ridiculous that you have to swap over to it. But at the enrages that I was testing, I didn't find it super necessary, although it was kind of on the limit when I tried to do a max enrage kill. The skill was off stream, it was after the fact, and I was kind of playing around with the preset a bit more. And right around 30 300% I noticed I was starting to struggle a little bit with crit chance as far as Meteor and D2H was concerned. However, we'll get into that a little bit later. And so that's where this preset comes to light. It is a poison forward build, focusing on Blood Reaver, really spamming out those poison hits. And for survivability sake, we went ahead and put in four piece trim masterwork because while TMW doesn't really offer any damage reduction, it delays damage and prevents one hit potential, being that per item worn up to all five pieces, it will take 10% of the damage that you would have normally taken and defer it into a bleed over time. So say you take a 10k hit and you have all five pieces on, you will take a 5k hit and then the rest of the 5,000 damage will be taken as a bleed effect over time. And with so many healing sources, this becomes relatively straightforward to deal with while also managing defensives like devotion and debilitate reflect and all the other stuff uh, res for example although at these enrages the although at these enrages I do notice it does get out of hand somewhat quickly uh, just after a couple minutes or so and that is where the other part of this preset starts to shine and that is the fact that we can now auto cast blood reaver now what does blood reaver do it essentially just gives you a 1000 heal every time you press it and it pulls from the health of the familiar so we can use things like prism of restoration from the ancient spellbook 
to heal the familiar, thus over a period of time giving us a somewhat infinite source of health. Now this is something that you have to manage, but it is not anything super difficult. You basically just click the prism as you're doing an ability and it'll go out every single time. Now the reason that I have three rune pouches instead of the usual two that you would find in melee camp is that I am on the ancient spellbook, so I need spellbook swap for disrupt shield and for vengeance because I like just being able to click the prism once and have it right there. I don't like spellbook swapping for prism. It's just a personal preference. And if you were on Lunar's swapping to Ancients for the Prism, you would need the third pouch anyway, so just do whichever is more comfortable for you. Now, the elephant in the room is that, yes, this is a preset, a melee preset on my channel that has Whip inside of it. I have talked on and on and on and on about how much I dislike the Whip. However, its bleed effect in this setup was too strong for me to ignore as far as using Blood Reaver to get out poison hits, and therefore I I had to cave in and use it, and I still completely stand by what I said and have always said about the whip of, yes, it is a best-in-slot, I understand it is a best-in-slot weapon, and I still cannot stand using it. I despise the fact that a tier 92 is outclassing a tier 95 as far as being best-in-slot, and the tier 95 is relegated to a 2-ability swap, but I digress. The scythe was there for AoE clearing, however, I think it's a little bit redundant because when everything's grouped up, you don't really need scythe range for D2H spam to really take place. And that is the main method that I was using for the minions. So honestly, scythe could probably just get yeeted out of the preset, but it honestly might as well stay there for cleave and for quake, as having those as a 5x5 five five is always nice, since cleave can be a little finicky as to for getting uh, AoE damage. Now as far as the EOFs that I have equipped, the ornament kit red EOF, that is Dragon 2, H. The red non-ornament kit EOF I have equipped is my EZK. The purple non-ornament kit EOF is a ZGS. And the green EOF with the ornament kit is Dragon Claws. Dragon Claws are there mainly for dealing with the arm attack, as it is four hits in one global cooldown, and if you're using Meteor with Gricko, it's very nice Adren return for a crit build Zerk. The ZGS I just have in an EOF because it's technically best in slot, but this is absolutely not necessary. The D2H I have in an ornament kit because I want the extra three stats for a damaging spec. And EZK is just there because you can use it with the spear to extend its effect, thus giving you more hit spam and more damage, thus giving you more healing potential and also making the fight shorter. It's just overall good in general to use. And I do have a physical EZK here in this preset. However, if you don't have one, don't worry. It's a fan fancy T95 cleave swap, that's all it is. Now you see an ECB in there, and it is there for good reason. If you Meteor Strike into a Zerk, you can Meteor Strike and then hit Gricko afterwards with just a Prayer Swap, and you will have 100% accuracy at Glacor doing so. Now what's nice is this is 7 hits inside of 1 global cooldown, and all of those have potential to crit, therefore giving you massive Adren return after a Meteor Strike. And, being that it's an ECB, it can also pull from the Hydrix Bolt effect, thus giving you more adrenaline. And as we all know in the current combat meta, the more adrenaline you have, the better off you are. The Divine is there just to help a little bit with damage reduction. If you're into Spirit Shield flicking, have at it and go full send. Sometimes I equip it as kind of a panic shield. And at these enrages, you're not missing out on any sort of res damage, so you might as well use the Divine. Grim Swap is there just so I have good crit chance when doing a Zerk, and also good crit chance for when I Meteor Strike the minions, and I can't remember the name of the dinosaurs, but I have the Meteor Dinos in my two Dino Pens that give you the 40% crit buff while using Meteor Strike. It's very nice, I highly recommend it for a melee setup, and you would think that sacrificing the Cade cooldown at Glacor would be a massive issue. However, I almost never use Barricade here, it's mostly using uh, Debilitate, Devotion, Res, and Preparation. Those are kind of the main defenses that I use. I have a couple brews there just in case I need some emergency healing, and a smart thing in hindsight to bring would be a spare Blood Reaver pouch just in case you let it die from not paying attention, and maybe even some spare Blood Reaver scrolls. Because when you have it on auto cast one, as you will see in the kill, it can burn through a couple hundred scrolls in just one kill. Alrighty,
Alrighty, I think that's enough rambling from me about the preset and kind of explaining everything here. I'm just gonna go ahead and show off the kill now. Now, after the kill on stream, I kind of gave some in-the-moment thoughts, and I will go ahead and leave those. I might chop out some dead space where I'm kind of thinking and whatnot about what I want to say. But other than that, let's go ahead and watch this kill. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. I still can't get over how cursed this inventory is. There's something I do need, though. Uh, where is it? Yeah, Punish is actually a good ability now. I keep forgetting that. Okay, that only took an hour. <laughs> All for a dumb girl.
I really like how easy arms are with melee. <laughs> like, you press Assault, Overpower, Hurricane, it, it's gone. It's just gone. Now, yeah, this is only 3k. This isn't, like, 35 or 4k, but still. I think where this method has validity... Let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's actually put some serious thought into this. I know, I know, me and serious thought to completely, uh unrelated concepts but i can see the easy k zgs and saving zerk for arm i could see that working well if you're trying to do like 200 ks melee because no one likes the zerk in tmw it's not fun we don't like our 20 second zerk no adrenaline no nothing because zerk at like 1300 plus is really painful investments but i think the bigger picture you can take from this is I think range melee could be really strong here. Like, being able to just delete arm whenever you want is really nice. Now, you have back-to-back -back arm, which is obnoxious, but... If you're on a crit build that's just happening to build big stacks, that could be very powerful. Just having that delete button. Especially with, like, D-Claw, the Lang spec, everything. That could be a lot of fun. I'm gonna have to play with that a bit more. Now, does that kill show that 4K is possible? Probably not. I'll be realistic here. I don't... I need a lot better crit chance on those minions to even have a hope in hell of doing 4K melee. Like, minions at 4K are no joke. 3K, they're like, oh, you know... They have, what, 100k HP on the main one and, like, 50 on the others? So, I could try saving ZGS for the minions and just only using really easy K or bleed damage on Glacor. I guess that could work. Because then instead of hitting like 7800s on the minions, you're hitting anywhere from 10 to 13s. You're hitting 13s on crits and probably even higher than that. I don't know. I will say this, 4k melee doesn't seem as impossible as it did before. I'll say that much, but anything else I'm not going to say if it's possible or not. It seems less impossible than first thought.